Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in the summer of 2020, around a year ago, I joined multiple online art programs in order to pass time and to improve my art while being stuck at home in a pandemic. During this time, one of my teachers recommended me a book, which changed my perspective about drawing forever. This book is called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. I never like putting really exaggerated clickbaity thumbnails, almost died, hashtag gone wrong <laughs> titles, but I genuinely think that this book helped me so much in order to get to the level I am today, and I would like to say that I'm proud of where I am today. So yeah. The book entails the psychology behind drawing, which I think is super cool because I also take psychology in my high school right now and I find how the human brain works really really interesting. Just knowing what our brains do when we draw, that really helps us to know what to do or what not to do when we actually draw. I've briefly talked about this book in the past and I highly recommend you read this book if you're interested as the video will only be about the takeaways and what I've learned from the book, so of course more detail will be in the book itself. Before we talk about how the brain works while we're drawing, let's first talk about how the brain works in general. As you know, there is the left and right side of the brain. The left hemisphere controls the right side of our body and vice versa, but you probably already knew that. Anyways, these two sides make up the two different modes, the left side of the brain, which is verbal and analytical, while the right side of the brain, which I'll be focusing more on in this video, is visual, perceptual, and simultaneous. Now what you don't know is that most of the time we use the left side of our brains, especially since there is such a huge focus on STEM in school. Most of the time we only get to use the verbal, analytical sides of our brain because we're doing maths, we're writing essays, we're doing presentations, etc. Due to this, the right hemisphere is often looked down upon in society and is developed less compared to the left side of our brains. A lot of the times why people may not necessarily quote draw well is not because they're actually bad at drawing, it's because they're using the wrong sides of their brain while drawing without even knowing it. Once you gain access to the right mode and turn down the left mode, that's when you can really truly draw. Like walking, breathing, you can also call drawing a global or whole skill, and it only really requires a set of basic components. These components are Number one, knowing where the edges and boundaries are. Number two, how to use negative space. Number three, the relationship between different objects and lines. Number four, lights and shadows. And number five, the gestal of the problem, which is basically how the different parts fit together. Once you know these components and integrate them, bam, you know how to draw. If you would like to go even further, then you can start training yourself how to draw from memory or imagination. A really good example of an artist that can pull this extremely difficult extra skill off is Kim Jong-gi. He does a lot of talks and live streams, but I think they're mostly in Korean, but I think they also have English subtitles. I'll leave his YouTube and Instagram in the description if you would like to check him out. This is also why the reason why many, many art teachers will tell you to go life drawing or figure drawing because this directly trains you into these components of how to draw. A lot of my viewers, I know, don't necessarily want to know how to draw realism or real life objects when they want to have a more cartoonish or anime style. And believe it or not, I used to think the same as well. I used to actually hate realism. I only wanted to draw anime characters, so I would just draw or attempt to draw like cosplayers <laughs> of my favorite anime characters it's tragic past 13 year old veda what are you doing <laughs> anyways that really changed when i started to research animation degrees for college because i'm at the age where i have to apply to colleges soon wow yay when most people think about animation they usually think about these styles as well however Every single art school that I'm planning to apply requires live drawing or figure drawing in the portfolio because these art styles derive from real life without properly knowing how the life works around us. How are we meant to write stories about them? So please, 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 please take my advice and really practice drawing from life. Of course, you don't only have to draw from life. You can draw anime and cartoon or whatever once in a while on the side as well. Just learn and start practicing this really good habit and you really won't regret it. Drawing depends heavily on the ability to see, processing visual information in a special way. 
It is also the ability to shift brain state to the right side of our brains. So what really exactly is this right hemisphere mode that I am really, really emphasizing upon? When you're using the right side of your brain, you sort of have an altered state of awareness. You feel aware and alert, yet relaxed. You find a hard time speaking, your senses of time become distorted, and you're just really, really in the moment. You can sort of compare this to bicycle riding. When you're riding a bike, you don't really think much. You just do it. And the same thing goes to drawing. When you draw, you don't really think much. You just draw. <laughs> I personally also call this being in the zone, with no distraction around you, headphones on, listening to music, sort of like being in another world. So how do you get to the right side of your brain? What my teacher taught me was not to think about drawing when you draw. Think about something else, what you ate for lunch, what that movie you watched last week, or how great Seventeen's latest comeback was. Just don't think about drawing. It's like thinking about walking when you walk and then you start walking weirdly. It's the same thing. And I always also like to say that it really takes a lot of time because I remember my teacher said in the beginning it took him so long to transition to this other side of his brain. And now it, he can just like instantly snap into this mode. So it really takes a lot of time and practice as well. So this is why a lot of our teachers recommend us to go to life drawing and stuff because that really trains us to get into this mode. I personally suggest listening to something when you draw. I really like making use of my time and being productive. So sometimes I listen to audiobooks or interviews when I draw or other times I listen to true crime stories because I find that like it's so interesting. Even though I can't stand gory, like scary stuff a lot of the times. But for me, if I listen to it, it's fine. But if it's like visual, then it's not okay. So when I draw, I'm not looking at the screen. So like it's perfect. <coughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but it's so funny that I don't want to cut it out. So, yeah. I also used to listen to science videos or just anything I find interesting when I draw because knowing more things to me is very cool so you can call me a nerd if you want but I think it's cool so leave me be and heck you can also listen to this video when you draw or any other of my videos when you draw self-promotion time subscribe to me <laughs> yay so basically the moral of the story is for a lot of the times it's really easy to get it to the right side of the brain when you listen to music or just anything every child is an artist the problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up this is a quote from Pablo Picasso, and as cheesy as it sounds, I really, really do agree with him. There are six stages in children's art that reflect the development of the brain. Number one is the scribbling stage, which occurs during infancy. This is just when the children's art is still in scribbles and starting to have some sort of definite shape. Number two is the stage of symbols, which happen around the up to the age of four, and this is when the art starts to have some symmetrical circular forms and small details. Number three is pictures that tell stories that happen around age four to five. Number four is the landscapes that happen around age five to six. Number five is stage of complexion, where they try to achieve realism and they're really concerned on aesthetic looks and they're usually actually cartoon and number six realism which is when they try to accept conflicts with their verbal knowledge because what they see and what they know is not matching when we're still infants the two hemispheres are actually not specialized yet and the specialization of the two sides also known as lateralization actually progresses through childhood and it is complete by the age of 10. In fact, if you don't practice drawing further than the age of 10, your progress is basically stuck at that stage. Unfortunately, many people abandon art because of this because they aren't drawing as well as they imagined and therefore giving up. This is where the symbol system comes in, which is when we subconsciously memorize a set of symbols from childhood. This often occurs when we use the left side of the brain to draw because we are just thinking about symbols rather than looking at the subject closely. So instead of thinking about drawing a certain object, think about drawing the shape of an object using the space around to guide you. Say you're drawing a scene, right? Think as though the subjects are connecting, using line to guide you through the drawing rather than saying, oh, that's my microphone, that's my carrot bong, that's my computer, etc. 
The more you perceive and draw what you see in the external world, the better artist you become. You could say drawing is basically seeing with your hand and taking what you see and putting them onto paper. I've actually hosted a drawing workshop at my school back in September 2020, and I actually got my students or the people that joined to do an activity from the book. The task was to recreate the artwork Portrait of Igor Stravinsky by Picasso, but it is upside down. The reason why the drawing is upside down is because we can then set our symbol system aside and truly focus on the relationships between the lines and just take your time instead of the fast-paced left hemisphere that always makes you keep going and keep thinking. So here are the results that my classmates, students from the lower years, and even teachers produced. Some of them were even shocked when they realized what they've drawn because they used the right side of their brains while drawing compared to always using their left sides or never even drawing before. Now you may be asking, Veda, what about drawing from imagination? Are you telling me not to be creative? Well, no, because if you think about it, every creative thing also derived from real life. So for example, character designs, right? Judy hops from Zootopia. Before the designers came up with the design of Judy, they have to study how a rabbit works, how the anatomy of a rabbit works, and then somehow fuse it with the anatomy of a person. So the designer really must have incredible knowledge of both the rabbit and human anatomy, which you can achieve through life drawing and even looking more down to the skeleton of the two species. Being creative is basically combining different or even unexpected parts of life together and mashing them into something new. And to do that, you have to understand the life around you first. I've basically only really covered the first five chapters of the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. If you guys would like, please comment down below and I will make a part two covering the rest of the book. Thank you so, so much for watching and subscribe if you'd like to see more art-related content and not just drawing, but all types of the arts because I think it's very important that we promote the arts in a very STEM-focused world. See you in the next video. Bye!